Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. This is another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. That reminds me of uh, the old emergency broadcasting system and radio. <laughs> this is a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. We're all going to die. No. All right. Well, welcome, folks. I'm Phil Thompson. I think I already said that, right? And as Steve just said, he's Steve Lacey. And this is the Church Solutions Podcast. Again, just in case you missed it the first time, uh, we are a tech company, and we are called JSL Solutions, and we help churches, ministries with all sorts of nice little things such as... Such as StreamingChurch.tv, ChurchChap Live, and MyFlock.com. And uh, we talk uh, mainly about tech, but today, because we all work with our churches here with this company, and because you work with your church, I'm assuming if you're listening to this podcast, because you're either a pastor or a volunteer, we want to talk a little bit about church volunteers. The, the, uh, this is summertime here when this is being recorded, and fall is coming up pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And for most churches, things begin to pick up again, activities start up. Projects begin, and volunteers, as we all know, are a big, big part of church ministry. Yes, they are the lifeblood. So we're going to talk 10 things you can't expect church volunteers to do. There's a lot of expectations. In fact, most of the problems in life come down to uh, (laughs) communication issues, but also expectations, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And uh, we can thank uh, Ryan Hoke here for this little... uh, the thing we're going to talk about, he's got an outline here that we're uh, borrowing to talk a little bit about. But volunteers are important. Hey, and Ryan's from... I don't remember. <laughs> oh. We've interviewed Ryan. We've, We've had him on the podcast. Ryan. He's part of a larger church in uh, the southeast. Somewhere out there. Yes. Yeah. But we... Uh, but if Ryan, if you're listening, sorry, I can't remember where where you work. But uh, we'll have to have him back on again, just so we can remember who he is. Uh, but seriously, I this mean, it's good stuff too. So. Well, it is good stuff because I mean, really, every church needs volunteers, and how we treat volunteers and how we prepare volunteers, you know, to help out in various parts of the church, it's it means so much to really an effective church that reaches people that disciples people that you know grows that you know, all those things are important so let's talk right. a little bit so about let's dive in all right so these are 10 things you can't you can't expect these people to do and the first one is invest their time without understanding the goals so uh, again we, we are we're in a busy life those of us in ministry lots of things going on we've got to take time out and one of the things we need to take time out is to explain our goals of what we're trying to accomplish in a particular area of ministry. Right. Because if they don't understand the goals and they're going about doing something, they very quickly may go, this does not make any sense. Why are we doing right. this? So. Yeah, they're not going to buy into it. And, and uh, you know, people have got to buy into a lot of things, you know, vision and all that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, but you know, what are we trying to accomplish, whatever it might be you're doing? Uh, whatever it is in the church you're trying to do, uh, they, they really need to understand right up front, you know, here's the goal. Here's what we are shooting for. Maybe you don't always hit it, but you're at least moving in that direction. Right. All right. All right. So, so the second one's kind of tied to that as well. It, it really is. So. Uh, the second one that you can't expect, you cannot expect church volunteers to do, and that would be to accomplish tasks without understanding the why. You know, why are we doing this? And again, uh, you know, some people, well, yours is not to ask why. Yours is just to do and die. I don't know what how that goes. But why is important? Because uh, volunteers want to know, you know, look, how's this task that, that you want me to do? How is this going to accomplish the goals that we've shared? So honestly, again, this is all you'll hear me say this all throughout this podcast. Time is, is really the, the key ingredient when it comes to investing in your volunteers, you got to spend some time. So you got to tell them why. Hey, what are we doing this project for? Why are we doing it? Why it's important to reach these goals? And I think if you do that, people can begin to catch on because, as you know, lots of times what we have in our minds doesn't always. It's not the same thing that's in somebody else's mind. Right. And if they're not, if there's not alignment, then yeah, right. what 
you've been asked to do might not make any sense and get frustrated. Yeah, and frustration's a big part. So there you go. So number three. Articulate the vision. Uh, actually, articulate the vision. Uh, be, besides articulating it, let me rephrase that, which is what we're kind of talking about here. They need to see it modeled. Right. They need to so see they, it in action. They can't articulate a vision that they aren't seeing modeled. It's It's got to be out there. So, uh, you know, you can put visions on the walls of your church and different areas of your church, but it's, if it's not being lived, there's an old saying, a vision on the walls means nothing if it's not lived in the halls. And so, uh, you know, we've got to, if you're in leadership, you've got to model what we're talking about here. Uh, and, and honestly, they, 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 the volunteers will, will model what they see long before what they read. So if we want this, what we're trying to accomplish in our ministry, in our church, it's got to be lived out. Right. It's got to be lived out by the, the leadership, the leadership team, you know, whatever your structure is at your church, board, leadership team, uh, staff. Uh, that's got to be lived out. And if you don't, if you're not modeling this, you can't expect volunteers to get it. Exactly. Could quite, again, just really bad problems if you... If there is a vision, but but the staff and the leaders aren't modeling it, you're like, hey, absolutely well, not good. Well, it's nothing but frustration because you know doing church work. I mean, we all know listening, to all of us here, listeners included, <laughs> it's not easy doing what we do here with churches, especially if you're a volunteer because you're putting in extra hours besides working your right. other job and your family life, whatever. So, uh, you know, there's got to be some life there. It's got to be some some modeling. All right, so 10 things you can't expect church volunteers That's to right. do, and we've been through three of them. Yeah. That's number four on our list. Function without encouragement. A big, really a big deal. Uh, function without encouragement. You can't expect volunteers to function without some encouragement. Uh, and, you know, I, and I used to work, I worked with your senior pastor for years, and he would admit this. He goes, I'm just not a very good encourager. <laughs> But he had people around him. This it always makes me giggle because uh, you know the one of our key elders what was. You, do you know his phrase? Uh, yes, yes, he Mac would, Norris. Yes, he would yes. say, "Phil, you're doing a fine job." Yeah. No matter and and Mac, to his credit, is good at that. I mean, it, it almost kind of became. Well, it was kind of a joke after a while because he would just say, you're doing a fine job. Yeah. And then you take somebody like me that's sarcastic, you know, <laughs> he's like, oh, bless your heart, you know. But I mean, but 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 Mac is an encourager. He's a good guy. He is. An and, encourager. Uh, we've known Mac for years and uh, I miss Mac. Uh, I, you know, I'm at a different church now. Uh, I work part time at a different church. But 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 really, it's got to be sincere encouragement. And, uh, it, you know, if you're a leader, a leader of your team, even if you're a volunteer and you have other volunteers working alongside of you and you're maybe heading up a team or something, encouragement is, is you can never get enough encouragement. I, I can agree with that. I was, yeah, I, I served in my church this past weekend and alongside someone else that was brand new. And it was uh, typically towards the end of the service, we all pat each other on the back and say, nice job, nice job. And it was really hard this weekend <laughs> to be able to say, because, man, we, I had somebody who was brand new that brand was new. really struggling. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's tough. But the other people yeah. stepped up and said, nice job, nice job. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, if somebody's having a hard time, if they're new or whatever, you know, find little, find little things that you can encourage them on, you know, and, and hopefully – uh, they'll continue to grow in the area. But, but uh, you know, volunteers, they, uh, we've got to show them how much we value them. And, you know, there's lots of things you can do. We've done this at my church. I think you've done it at yours. You know, maybe you have a, a night once a year maybe or a couple times a year where you honor volunteers and mm -hmm. maybe pick a volunteer of the month if you want to go that far and get them a – little, you know, coffee Special shops. parking spot. Yeah, there you give them a parking <laughs> spot. Well, you know what I'm saying. You, you know, maybe get them a Starbucks card or, or something that shows them appreciation. Right. I mean, you know, if, if, I think you and I are kind of wired the same way, Steve. We're just, we're just going to plow away on things, and we may not need as much encouragement as somebody else might, but we all need it, and we all need to be reminded that we need to share it with other people. All right. So number five on our list, kind of tied to this one a little bit. Yeah. Well, okay, so ten things as we go through this list, ten things you cannot expect church volunteers to do, and that is work for free. What? 
Wow. We're going to put them on the payroll? I thought that was the whole idea of volunteers, <laughs> right? Uh, look, we all know that you may not be able to financially compensate them, but it doesn't mean that you can't bless them in some form, some capacity. I mean, look, there's things you could do, uh, little things, again, which, you know, I, I don't know, coffee, snacks, mm -hmm. uh, maybe – uh, if you have the opportunity or at least make the opportunity, because sometimes we don't have the opportunity because we're so busy, but make the opportunity to go out of your way and get them some water <laughs> or, or something uh, that, that would show some appreciation uh, in a practical way. Yeah, or the, you know what's, what's common, too, uh, as I've volunteered on different things, has been uh, if you have a big project to do you're feeding people you're yeah. getting pizza and right. buying their lunch and mm -hmm. whatever it may be so. yeah yeah there's a lot of little things if, if you really sit down and, and get creative there's a lot of things you can do that may be little but mean a lot to people because they're working hard they're you know they're they're laying down their life to to make this thing happen so uh, definitely and uh, uh just you know in some way some capacity bless them all right Number six on our list is what? You cannot expect church volunteers to have your back if you don't have theirs. So what do we mean by that? I, you know, I, I have, uh, when, I, when I first started to, I, I switched over to a different church, and, and, and one of the, uh, actually the wife of the senior pastor, because I, I was instituting some changes that, uh, you know, change for churches is hard. And you're talking about changing the way you do a service or changing some aspect of your ministry. That's a tough thing for many people to swallow. They just, most people don't like change. So I was instituting a lot of change. And I'm sure there was grumbling going on behind the scenes uh, about, you know, what's this Phil Thompson guy doing here and all that stuff. But one of the, 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 the senior pastor's wife came up to me one, one day and she goes, you need to know that you're doing a good job and that Kevin always has your back. He always has your back. And he no matter always, what everyone else says about you. He's yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's true even, you know, uh, if your volunteers screw up, if you're heading an area of ministry up and, and one of your guys or gals goofs up, you know, uh, you want to have their back. You want right. to help them through it and you want to speak positively of them. Because, and I've seen this happen and, and you know, I think we all have. I mean, I, we used to do a deal uh, a long time ago at another church I was at where Monday morning we would get together as a staff and we would kind of go through the whole weekend and how did things go and what went wrong. And, 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 and sometimes it's easy to pick on little, you get in that mode and you get nitpicky, you know, right. so-and-so played the wrong chord mm -hmm. on that song, you know, and how dare they play the wrong chord, you know? And it's like, well, okay, but you know, she's doing a good job. <laughs> she just made a mistake, you know? And that's what I'm getting at is ha have the back of your people, uh, and, and encourage them. And uh, if somebody comes around trying to tear them down, you don't let that happen. Right. Now, maybe they've got a, maybe somebody has a legitimate point. Hey, so and so is doing this wrong. Well, okay. Uh, you know, have their back, and then you can go to them later in private and say, you know, this is happening here. How can we help you uh, correct this issue or whatever it might be? So, but if you don't have their back, they're not going to have yours. <laughs> oh, the, I would, yes. <laughs> you know? If somebody didn't have my back, you're, you're out of there, right? So. Well, yeah, you know, and, and they're gonna, it's going to become a gossip mill, and there's going to be people, uh, you know, struggling if you're leading a team or something. Uh, you know, and before you know it, there's mutiny, and there's all sorts of problems, and all it right. all goes downhill. So have their back. All right, all right so number seven on our list. Produce last-minute miracles <laughs> on a constant basis. So you cannot expect church volunteers to produce last-minute, we call miracles here, on a, on a regular basis. Now, look, all of us, I'm sure, again, listening to this podcast in this room, there's always these last-minute changes that pop up. It's just part of ministry. And I used to have a really hard time with it because I used to like to really plan everything out. And then somebody would change something. Like, oh, my God, you're changing this. But I've learned that change is part of the game. It's just part of, of ministry. And sometimes you have to make changes. And, and you know, when you make changes, uh, people will rise to the occasion. And they will help you get things done. But if it's mm -hmm. happening every single time. Yes. You don't want to have to it, 
require them to come and save the day for you. Every single, t- you know, or, or at least on a regular basis. I mean, that tells me that whoever's planning things out or whoever's got this thing set up is not doing their job. Right. And, and all of a sudden, oh, we got to change this, we got to change that. And uh, so, you know, it's going to happen. It, change happens. And when it happens on occasion, you know, again, good volunteers, they'll do it. They'll go for it. But if it's happening every week or every other week. Yeah, kind of ties thing. into the next point, right? It does. Uh, the next point is you can't expect volunteers to drop everything because you – Fail to plan ahead. This is a, uh, it's, yeah, this is definitely ties into what we just said. And, and that's, you know, what's the word? Uh, your lack of preparation. <laughs> the lack of preparation on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Yes, that's and, very true. And again, we've all seen that happen. We've done it ourselves and we've had it done to us. And, uh, it's, you know, there are some, I worked with guys, you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time as you have, and I have worked with some guys that felt like, you know, it was spiritual, not the plan because we're being led of the spirit here. And look, I understand that. And I think there's a certain amount of truth to that, but, but, you know, you, if you're just, if you're using it as a, as an excuse, because you didn't do your homework, right? you know, then it becomes not a badge of honor, but it becomes a handicap. And it, it, it messes everything up. And, and uh, you know, you've got to, which is going to lead into the next point, there, there's got to be some time usually to plan ahead so that you can really put together a good experience for people. All right. So, num- so the next one, number nine on our list. So number, number nine on our list kind of ties into that. Uh, you can't expect volunteers to be creative without some kind of direction, without support, and without some preparation. Uh I I I don't feel like I'm a real creative person but if I if I'm able to sit down and put some energy and time into something many times I can come up with something that's fairly mm-hmm. decent but if you're asking me to just do it off the top of my head every single time right. it's going to be a problem I don't care how creative you are uh people need some time to prepare and and you know sometimes you can get creative ideas you're laying in bed taking a shower, you know, sometimes it just comes to you. But I have found if I know ahead of time that we've got something coming up and we need to get some ideas flowing on that, uh, that, that usually means more success for me because then something will pop into my head many times at the weirdest time, but at least I had enough time to be thinking about it. There was, um, I just finished uh, reading, listening to the shoe dog which is a book by Phil Knight. He's the founder, one of the co-founders of Nike. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm just trying to remember where I heard this, but I think it was in that book. He, he kind of reiterated over and over. He says, don't, um, you don't, you tell, don't tell people how to do the work. Just tell them what you want done. So right. he says, yeah. tell them the work you want done and let them come up with. Yeah. The, you know, I think that's oh. really important. Right. But again, I think there needs to be some, you some know, support. And, there's got to be support and it's got to be preparation time. Right. And, and, uh, again, I, you know, I, I occasionally speak at my church and the more time I have to prepare, uh, even if I'm not literally sitting at a computer typing out a sermon or, or doing a bunch of research, if I know I'm speaking on a particular subject and it begins to dwell in my mind and, and then a lot of times I, something will come to me you know, at the strangest times and then I'll write it down or something. And then when I actually go to prepare to my, my presentation, you know, I've got that thing written down and it came to me in the middle of the night or when I was feeding the dog or something, you know? And so again, support direction and preparation, very important in my opinion for right. that to happen. So, and then our 10th item on the list, you can uh, yes. expect volunteers to, be motivated long term by guilt. Guilt, the gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> guilt. You can't expect volunteers to uh, to really get things done if they're motivated all the time by guilt. It's just, and, and you know, unfortunately, guilt has become a tool that many church leaders have used. Oh, yeah. They've used guilt to get people to come on a regular basis. They use guilt to get people to give. They use guilt to motivate people. Uh, you know, there's manipulation and there's motivation. 
And uh, <laughs> right. So, and if they are motivated by guilt, there it won't last, right? It'll... It it really won't for the most part. I mean, I mean, there's some people that just live under guilt all the time, and that's it's not a I happy know. place to be, though. It's not a happy place to be, and they're miserable like, people. Oh, I better go do this at church because. But uh, they uh, expect me to. I, I think it was actually your senior pastor who I you knew really well. I think he even would make a joke. His wife would tell him. You know, there's a fine line between your motivation and your manipulation. <laughs> and he was always he would always say, and this was not really regarding church stuff. This was, I think, when he was encouraging his wife or his family to do something. You know, and 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 I think, yeah, I think we have to be careful. If you're involved in some kind of leadership capacity, I do think you need to check that. I think you need to check yourself, and you need to constantly look at yourself and say, okay, am I doing this? Am I manipulating okay. somebody with guilt? Or am I motivating them, you know, with encouragement and, and the right thing to do? Because mm -hmm. guilt, yeah, it's 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 long term process will not work. And what it does is it if you're leading a team or leading a church, it, it will erode it creates resentment. Yeah, exactly. It erodes your respect, your honor, and right. uh, it will fall apart on you sooner or later. I've known people like this, and I'm sure there's people listening to this podcast that could say, "Yep, I know people like this all the time," right. and it's not a good, not so, a good impression. So, one of the things that wasn't in this list is a little bonus piece that is um, I've often heard and and taught is you know you you work for an audience of one, mm -hmm. and if you yeah. keep that mindset of you know I'm not here to please everybody, I'm just here to right to please one and yep. that will make a big difference in your attitude yep. and how you work with other people. And yep. so there's our bonus. I, yeah, that's for free. Yeah. We get that folks for no extra charge today. Uh, I think that's absolutely right because you're always going to have people you work with that don't do these things right because we're all human. We make mistakes yeah. or, or you do things and the people around you don't like, but you, right. Yeah, if you're doing it for an audience of one, yeah. you do your best. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, and so, again, if you're on the other side of this, if you're a volunteer, you know, why do you do what you do, you know? And I think what you said is, is right. You're doing it for, for, the, for an audience of one. You're doing it for God. You're doing it for the kingdom. And, uh, and that's really the prime motivation. But, but obviously, <laughs> these things we just talked about are, are – Oh, have an influence. They're very Definitely. good, you know, to have and to practice if you're leading people because all those things are so important in our life. But volunteers, uh, you know, we're getting into the busy season now pretty soon, and volunteers, you know, are involved in things, and we love our volunteers. We appreciate our volunteers at my church, at your church, and uh, everybody needs to uh, be involved. And volunteering is a positive thing for everybody. And uh, I, I hope that you can get success. If you're a leader in your church right now listening to us, uh, I, you know, you probably know most of these things somehow, some way. I, we just want to encourage you to, to keep these things in, in mind because uh, it, will, it will help your church grow and, and reach people. And, and it will help the volunteers, too. It's, it's, you know, it's a part that it's beneficial for everybody. So there you have it. All right. We got it. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. If you have some feedback on this, we would enjoy hearing from you. Support at streamingchurch.tv. That's our email, support at streamingchurch.tv. If you have complaints, just address it to Steve Lacey. <laughs> Uh -huh. If you have compliments, address it to me, Phil Thompson. I'm, I'm kidding, of course. But uh, we are here to help and serve the church. And so if there's any way we can do that with technology, we are. Uh, that's one of our deals. But because we've had a lot of experience in ministry, we also address some of these other issues. And people can get this podcast. We've, we're on various platforms. Uh, where would you advise people to pick up this podcast, Steve? Um, iTunes, Stitcher, what are some of the others? There's, Your they favorite can, podcast player will have us included. So. Yeah, and there should be an RSS feed, right? There should be. They can subscribe to it, whatever yes. they're getting, and uh, they can get it in their email or whatever every week or loads up on their phone. And loads in their podcast player. Their yes. podcast player and all Automatically, that. Automatically, so. magically yeah. appears. And so you'll never miss a podcast from Church Solutions. There you go. Yeah. Oh, boy, life couldn't be any better. All right. So we're out of time. We've been goofing around here a little bit, but we hope that this has encouraged you and helped you. And again, if we can help you in any way, please let us know. So he is Steve Lacey. I am Phil Thompson. I hope that you have a great day and we'll catch you again for another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care. <laughs>